guys, Chris here, and today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new, soon to be released, Hazardous 9X skates from True Hockey. Now, these skates, or the Hazardous range of skates, is going to be replacing the TF range of skates from True. Now, just for reference, this is their power and stability range of skates. The Catalyst, which is a separate range of skates from True Hockey, is their agility, dynamic skating, and speed range of skates. So, we're going to be seeing Hazardous replacing everything that had TF in it before. And this video is going to be, of course, a new versus old, showing you what's changed between these two skates to help you figure out if you want to save yourself some money and grab an incredible pair of skates on clearance or if you want to be spending a little bit more and upgrading to the brand new hazardous 9x skates or any of the other models of hazardous skates that are going to be out there because of course we're also going to be looking at the models below this a little bit later on And of course guys, before we jump into the video, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. It's completely free, helps the channel grow, helps to sustain us, helps us to get access to products like these before they're officially announced. If you want us to continue doing that, please thumbs up the video, please subscribe, and let's jump into the video. Now, as always, we're gonna start at the base of the skates and work our way upwards and show you what's changed. Starting off with the original TF9s from True Hockey, base of the skate with the blades, this featured True's Shift Onyx runners, which had that black coating, which is not DLC. That is something completely separate that you had to look at the models above, which is of course stepping into the custom range that True offers. But these black runners helped to fight oxidization or rusting of the blade. They also helped to beef up the durability just a little bit and also add a little bit more edge retention and edge bite on the ice. Now, the difference between these runners and the new ones, these being True's stainless steel, shift max runners these were stainless steel they didn't have that black coating on them of course you can upgrade to other runners from trues but the main difference with the brand new runners not having that black coating is number one the second one is going to be the fact that you can clearly see even from here that the brand new shift max runners are much taller than what we see with the previous generation of true blades that essentially means that you're going to have a tighter turning circle on the ice so you're going to be able to turn a lot sharper a lot harder with slightly taller steel and of course the steel with the shift max runners is going to be of high quality not just any one of the mill steel blades but true of course still has dlc which is like the king of king of runners to date. Now when we move up into the holders, although they look pretty much identical at a glance, you have the shift holder and now you have the shift max holder. Difference between those is the way that the blade is fastened inside the holder is a little bit different. It could be argued to say that the shift max holder offers a little bit more blade lock, not that there was any particular issues with this one, but more importantly it also means that the old runners will fit on the brand new holder. So if you have a bunch of runners and you're going for the TF range of skates and you want to move over onto the brand new Hazardous 9X, you can do that no problem. If you're a gamer, it's backwards compatible, but it means that the brand new runners are not going to work on the older holders because the way that they attach is a little bit different. Part of the metal that slips into the holder on the brand new um, runners from True Hockey is just a bit too tall for what you would see with the original holders. Now, as we move up into the shell of these skates, these are, of course, True Hockey skates which means that they're all one piece shells something i have to touch on of course there's no outsole you guys know what a one piece shell is by now uh, but what they've done differently is although these seem like you have two copper on the back of each side of these rivets and then the rest would be expected to be made from a different material they are actually in fact all copper now what that means is that if these skates weren't properly maintained and looked after after you got off the ice these over time would rust now what true has done to combat this with the brand new range of skates is that they've upgraded all of the rivets that were previously copper except from the two on the back all of these rivets are now stainless steel so you're not going to experience that issue with the brand new skates which is a big big deal for a lot of players because i know that we should look after our skates but most of us just get off the ice throw our skates into a bag and don't see them until the next time that we're on. So it means that these are going to be much more durable. There's not going to be any holder separation or anything like that. Much, much better quality uh, rivets, which is always going to be appreciated. Now, another point that I have to mention is, of course, the way that they could have combated this was just drilling more holes into the base of the older skate to increase the airflow inside the boot, but that would compromise the rigidity and stiffness of the one-piece shell. So upgrading the rivets on the new Hazardous 9X makes a lot of sense. Now, of course, from there, moving up into the one-piece shell of both of these skates, when we look at the TF9s from True, these featured a co-molded carbon fiber and thermoplastic one-piece shell. 
bit of a mouthful. But that was essentially the secret recipe that allowed true hockey skates to be so thermoformable around a player's foot. If you look at the construction of the skate, and this is a brand new skate out of the box, it's incredibly anatomical the way it's shaped. You don't really get any other hockey skates at a retail level that look anywhere close to this. And that was one of the biggest things or the biggest reasons for true success in the industry because their fit was essentially unmatched. And even at a retail level, custom is a completely different ball game, but at a retail level, their fit was completely unmatched. Now, what we see when we move over onto the brand new Hazardous 9X from True is essentially an evolution of the construction that we saw in these boots over here. We've still got that same secret recipe, but what True have done is essentially just refined it and upgraded it based on player requirements and needs, and of course, the natural evolution of skates. Now, what True are calling the new construction on these skates is the NeuroFit Plus, which is that one-piece shell that's been designed to essentially deliver more direct energy transfer. Now, in addition to the technology in this skate's shell being essentially more refined and upgraded in what we see in the Hazardous 9X, you can also see that there's a big difference with the general look and the way that the skate has been put together. What you get with the TF9s was True's True Shell technology, which is where the toe cap or the toe box, as you can see here, kind of wraps and almost enters the forefoot area of the skate's construction. Now that was essentially designed to eliminate any weak points in the high wear area or high impact areas of the skates and also provide superior protection. Now what we get when we look at the brand new skates from True, which are the Hazardous 9X, this is True's brand new curved toe cap with a low profile design. Now this is gonna allow for a lot more maneuverability on the ice, a better turning and better clearance on the ice. You can see how much, much smaller and much more low profile the brand new toe cap is in respect to the previous generation. Now, in addition to this, what True have done, if you look at the brand new Hazardous 9X skates, is that they've exposed a hell of a lot more of the carbon fiber weaving that you can see on the skate. Now, whereas this doesn't essentially have any performance benefits, it looks a hell of a lot cooler than what we saw on the previous TF9s. These are a one-piece shell construction. These are a carbon fiber skate, but because of the technology, specifically the True Shell technology from True Hockey, and this toe cap kind of extending into the construction of the skate, along with the synthetic leathers and plastics that were on top of the carbon fiber weaving, a lot of that was hidden on the TF9 skate. Now, personally, if I had to pick from a purely aesthetical perspective, which one of these two skates I'd like the look of, it's gonna be the Hazardous 9X. Now, aside from the tech of how these skates are constructed and the elimination of a lot of these synthetic leathers and plastics on the brand new 9x skates from true which of course is going to have an impact on the weight of these brand new skates versus these all of these extra materials that have been laid over the carbon fiber weaving have been removed when we look at the hazardous 9x skates which is going to have an impact on that weight i think the old kind of like um, conspiracy theory about how true skates are so much heavier than all of the other skates that are out there back in the day was something that was real because i even mentioned that in my in my videos previously but with what we have today the catalyst range of skates and also now the soon to be released hazardous range of skates it's just not something that can be discussed anymore it's something that did exist in the past but is truly well and dead now now of course naturally that leads us onto the look of these skates that's going to be a big big difference i feel like the tf9 at its time i understand why this construction existed because this true shell technology was something that we saw on previous generations of skates from True Hockey, especially in the custom field as well. But it's really nice to see how the skates have evolved into what I like to refer to as a much more modern looking skate. If this was hanging up in a store, this is a skate that would pop out to me. I love the color scheme. I love the design. I love the exposed carbon fiber weaving. I feel like this is a big improvement in the area of looks for True Hockey skates. Now from there, of course, we're gonna be looking at the tendon guards on both of these skates. These do have flexible tendons, which in my opinion is just the way skates need to be constructed, but that's my opinion. With what we saw on the previous generation of skates, the TF9s from True Hockey, although these tendons were flexible, they were incredibly stiff. There was very little play in them. Now that, of course, ties into the power and stability line of skating. But when we do look at the Hazardous 9X, these do, of course, still feature a flexible tendon, but it is just, you can see, like I said, these, these skates are fresh out of the box. They've not been used, but you can see that there's a lot less play in the older skates than there is in the new skates. That's definitely something that's going to sit well with a greater volume of players uh, and definitely sits well with a player like myself. Some other things that I've noticed is the tendon is also just a little bit taller on these particular skates over here. I will mention that these are two different sizes. This is a size bigger than this one, uh, but with this tendon sizing, it's the same if these were both the same size. The tendon on the brand new Hazardous 9X is gonna be a little bit bigger than what you saw previously on the TF9 from True Hockey. And I just feel like it's a little bit more comfortable because it has a little bit more play in it. It's not gonna be anywhere near as flexible as what we see in the Catalyst range of skates, but I just thought I would touch on that because a flexible tendon is something I really appreciate in a skate. 
And of course, the reason for a flexible tendon guard is just going to be to allow you to have a greater range of motion of movement on the ice. And also while you're deep into your strides, allowing you to have that full leg extension, the tendon guard having that little bit more play is going to allow you to just get deeper into your strides with a little bit more ease. But because of how much it kind of springs back into position, it's really going to help with the snap that you put on the end of your strides. This is one of the reasons why I always prefer to have a flexible tendon over a fixed tendon with the particular types of hockey skates that I prefer. Now from there, taking a look at the tongues on both of these skates, both of them are asymmetrical tongues. Something that I did notice immediately looking at the older generation of tongues versus the new is going to be the thickness of the tongue. Now this, before I go into the inside of it, featured the T-guard protection on the front to safeguard you against uh, stick slashes, pucks, if you're blocking shots, anything like that. I didn't feel like this was as well integrated into the actual tongue as what you see on the new range of skates. But aside from that, something that was more important was the thickness of the tongue. Tongues are something that I am incredibly critical over, regardless of what skate manufacturer it is. And these tongues, as you're kind of like in this area over here, were quite thick and padded. The foams are very dense. It's not like your normal kind of like seven millimeter felt tongues. I feel like True's always done a good job of creating good tongues, but this particular tongue at the time seemed completely adequate. The foams are very dense and are around the center portion of the, of the skate's tongue, but as you work your way upwards, the foams get thinner and thinner up until you get to this sort of area over here here, where it becomes basically just a fixed piece of material without that spongy touch to it whatsoever. Now, when we look at the brand new tongues featured on the Hazardous 9X, these are a lot more up my street. The whole tongue is padded incredibly well. It's very thick, but very dense at the same time. It's just a greatly constructed tongue. The foams go the entire length of the tongue. They're on the sides. They're at the top of the tongue. It's probably like less than one mil of a liner at the top where there's no padding, which isn't something that's going to affect any of the players. It's not something that's going to affect your comfort, your performance, but it's just me trying to express how high the padding goes up and how much thicker, softer, but also still quite dense it is. When we look at the lace bite protection and also protection in the front, it's completely integrated in the into the tongue's design. Of course, this is still an asymmetrical tongue, so you'll have a left and a right, but this is just all round a better constructed tongue. It's also a little bit bigger. You might be able to see that on camera as well. Not by much, but it is a slightly bigger, slightly more padded, much, much more comfortable tongue. And of course, just to mention this being a true skate, you can of course switch the tongues out. This isn't something that's not gonna be continued in this range of skates. So if you would prefer a slightly thicker tongue, a slightly thinner tongue, you can remove the tongue and replace it with another one from True's Hockey Store. There's plenty of options out there that you can pick. Now, of course, looking at the liners on both of these skates, this is a just standard Clarino liner. It's kind of like that pro look to it, quite subtle inside, not very bright and very soft to the touch. And when you feel the kind of like padding inside the skate, it doesn't feel anywhere near as substantial, as cushioned as what you get with the Hazardous 9X. The pads inside this skate feel just a lot more softer to the touch, a lot spongier, and they just feels like there's a lot more of them. And similar to the comments I made about the tongue, it feels like the padding inside the Hazardous 9X, as you work your way up with the TF9s, the padding gets thinner and thinner and thinner as you get to the top of the neck area of the skate. Whereas the Hazardous 9X, it just feels like the padding continues the the whole way up and then wraps around the top of the skate around the neck of the skate to provide you that comfort edge as a lot of people have referenced I've seen online that true skates don't have comfort edges it's because the liners go all the way up throughout the entire structure of the skates construction and then kind of just wrap over the top to give you that extra bit of support and protection and of course comfort it sounds like I've mentioned that before maybe some of the other things you're also going to notice very heavily inside the Hazardous 9X versus the TF9s is that these are bright. They look good. Like the liners inside there, I feel look great. You look inside the skate and it looks sick. There's a lot of oranges. There's like super, super metallic silvers in there. There's blues in there. There's just a lot of color going on in there and it helps the liners to look a hell of a lot more premium. In addition to this, these liners, while they're also Clarino, so they're moisture wicking to keep your feet dry, light, comfortable, and to keep the skate light. In addition to this, these liners are also dimpled. Now that just helps to keep your feet locked inside the skates in position much more securely so there's no slippage. Whether you skate with socks or without socks, these liners are gonna do a better job, especially because the foams inside there are much more 
more padded, much more supportive. There's more of them. That in conjunction with the surface of the liners being dimpled is really going to help to keep your heel, your foot locked in place, comfortable while you're on the ice in these skates. Those are really the major differences between the insides, which doesn't seem like a lot, but the comfort, the amount of padding that's been used, and obviously the way it looks, the textures, those are big differences and they're going to have a big impact on how the skates feel and also how they perform on the ice. And very quickly looking at the footbeds of both of these skates, they're both pretty standard foam footbeds. The only difference is the TF9s had little inserts that you could stick on the bottom of the footbeds to change the height of the arch support. This has been discontinued in the brand new Hazardous 9X, but of course you have the option to purchase their Genetics footbeds. A link for those will be down below in the video description once they're available, which are an all round much better option. Now that brings us to the end of the video, but before we cut, I just wanted to say that hopefully this has helped to shed light on the differences between the original TF9s versus the soon to be released Hazardous 9X skates. But I didn't want this video to discredit how good of a skate these are. These were released right at the start of the pandemic. The players that did get their hands on them had an incredible experience with these skates. So I didn't want this video to discredit from the fact that these are great. And if you're looking to save money, as a lot of hockey players out there are, as I low, as I know, a lot of hockey players out there are trying to save some money when they're buying equipment. This is definitely a pair of skates I'd consider looking at. Don't be discredited by this video. But if you feel like the changes from the TF9s to the Hazardous 9Xs, those features, those new additions, the things that they've stripped back to reduce the weight of the skate are valid reasons for you to pick up the skate, then go ahead and get it. But I just didn't want to discredit from these boots because they are great and you can snag yourself a deal because whatever price they are now is going to be discounted. And when these get officially announced, these are going to get discounted even more. So maybe consider picking yourself up a deal, but if not, of course, you've got the brand new Hazardous 9Xs and the models of skates below the Hazardous 9X, which we're gonna be looking at later on on the channel. But a big thank you for watching this. A big, big thank you to True Hockey for making this video possible. Anything I've referenced in this video will be linked down below, like the difference between the Blades DLC and Black Blades, what's the real difference? All those will be linked down below. And of course, all of the other videos that we've done with True Hockey products will be linked down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.